The Wonderful World of AE Cars. This is part four, showman's engines, Fresnel lenses and impressions. Well, I'll be honest with you, and I'll get serious for about a minute here. Showman's engine is probably the most beautiful personification of a steam engine I have ever seen. In fact, it is most likely the most beautiful thing ever constructed by the hand of man. And I, personally, want one very, very badly. I've never seen something so beautiful except perhaps for a first order Fresnel lens. A Fresnel lens is an incredibly beautiful and precisely made optical device, which in my opinion can be considered one of the very first pieces of information technology. The first light stations were just chandeliers of candles in windswept lantern rooms. The Fresnel lens was the first attempt at making the safety of ships at sea possible by navigation through light stations along the coast. The Fresnel lens, first of all, takes the light of a very weak oil or gas burner of the day and can project it up to 20 miles to the horizon. The other advantage of a Fresnel lens is, because it is a rotatable optic, it can be given a characteristic. When you go down the road and you see a vintage police car with a revolving light, it's much the same way. You can have a Fresnel lens rotate a series of flash patterns of specific intervals or colors out to the ship that's viewing it and this will tell them, the captain of the ship, what lighthouse he is looking at and therefore where he is on the map. And this revolutionized both the accuracy of maritime navigation and also the safety of maritime navigation. We had Fresnel lenses when steam engines were in their infancy. And the amount of precision they were constructed with is really beyond me, almost. I'm still researching the methods they use to construct these things. Well, I didn't know that. And I thought they were called Fresnel lenses. There's an S in the middle, but it's a bit like soldering, obviously. You know, if I had a voice like yours, Alex, I don't think I'd mess about with dirty, mucky, filthy steam engines. I think you've become a voiceover artist. I've thought about it. I'm not nearly as vocally talented as some other people, but I have managed to scare some people before. I can do a lot of impressions and accents and noises and things like that. But there, there are people who are much better cut out for that sort of work than I am. And I wouldn't get as much joy out of that work as I would from this. You'd be very good at voiceovers because you've got a really good, well, dare I say it, American accent. And you can speak to camera in one piece. I can't. If I speak to camera, then I get it wrong and have to do it again. All of my narrations on the videos that you hear are doing bits and pieces into a microphone sat watching the video. But... I have heard one of your impressions of me, and I can't say I was impressed by that. Just for the record, I never did narrate the series Thomas the Tank Engine, and I'm not from Liverpool. Today I'm going to completely destroy this engine, and you get to watch. And I'll also talk about my hemorrhoids as I do so. No, in terms of accents... I've had to do several, uh, you know, especially because in my line of work, sometimes you have to sneak around and, and be, uh, you know, be quite clever and, and be someone you're not so you can get into somewhere you're not supposed to get into. Like, Hello, my name is Dimitri. I have come to inspect the electrical infrastructure under this mine. Uh, I have security clearance. I promise I'm not American at all. Uh, and if you'll just please let me inspect the uh, room with the winding machinery, I will be on my way momentarily. Thank you. This. Uh, also, sometimes, you know, the thing is, if you're American, they don't like you very much, you know, in the United Kingdom because Americans are rightly so um, sort of thought of as very uncultured, very sort of undesirable company. So, you know, sometimes you have to be English, don't you? You know, and, and sometimes you've got to be a different sort of English, you know, it's sort of, you can't really pronounce the TH in any of the words any of the time, you know. I uh, forget which region it's actually come from, but it's, it's a good one, it's a good convincing one. What I'm doing now is I'm cleaning up the brasses of the engine. And right now I'm doing the snifting valve. For those of you who don't know what a snifting valve is, it's called that because of the noise it makes. <laughs> and the thing is, what it is, you'll find them on the smoke box or on top of the valve chests or sometimes on the branch pipes. When the engine is running and you shut the regulator, of course the engine is going to keep coasting unless you brake to a stop. And at that point the cylinders are going to act like gas compressors. And what's going to happen is with the steam coming from the branch pipes into the valve chest and then out the chimney, with the valve set the same way around with it coasting, it's going to want to suck gases from the branch pipes and blow them up the chimney. And without being able to do that, 
it will either provide a braking effect to the locomotive, or worse, it can pull cinders and ashes and other things down the blast pipe into the valve chest and into the cylinders and score them up. So the snifting valve is a vacuum breaker. When you close the regulator and the pressure in the branch pipe and valve chest drops to nothing or below zero, this is a check valve that opens and lets air from the atmosphere inside and allows the cylinders to recirculate air and other gases without pulling things down the blast pipe. Uh, some tips to note, especially if the snifting valve does not go through a pipe in the smoke box, they will cool your cylinders very rapidly and destroy the lubrication. So when you're drifting a locomotive, keep the regulator cracked open to keep the steam and cylinder oil feed through them. And in locomotives on the continent like Hungary and Bosnia, there will be a lever next to the reverser called a drifting valve, which will allow communication between the exhaust and admission side of the valves, and sometimes these are even coupled with snifting valves. But a drifting valve is better because it does not cool the cylinders, but it lets the gases recirculate in the same way. I love engines with brass. There's engines in France on the PLM and the Paris Orleans where the entire, I'm talking full-size locomotives, the entire boiler cladding was brass and they were expected you to polish it and they looked amazing. They're a nightmare to look after but there's just nothing like them when you, when you get one. It looks incredible. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.